Hello, Anime Yen here. Welcome. This is part 2 of a series I've made analyzing YouTube, taking apart the fundamental components which make up this wonderful community. Specifically today, Let's Plays. If you haven't watched the first video in the series, feel free to do so in the upper right hand corner. Now today, we dissect the styles of my favorite Let's Plays, two which we didn't get through in the previous video. So please indulge me as we go on a journey through the seams of YouTube. I guess you could also say that this is a fan video. So the first Let's Player I want to talk about is Die Dev Die. His channel is something that I've admired for quite a long time now, but I've never had the courage to say thank you and appreciate what he does. But here I am, and I want to say a sincere thank you from the bottom of my heart. Die Dev Die is a small channel on YouTube, and every bit of his channel is something to savor. His content is a testament to the unwavering dedication he has towards his viewers, gratifyingly entertaining and brutally human. What makes Die Dev Die's content so gratifyingly entertaining? A little backstory. It was July 2016 when I got into the video game We Happy Few. And when I mean I got into the game, I mean I watched a countless number of playthroughs. Now the backdrop of We Happy Few, with its drug-addled Orwellian society, is a video in itself, and perhaps I'll make another video on it sometime in future. But the point is, I had saturated my mind with We Happy Few playthroughs, gameplays, and walkthroughs. Everything there was to be known about the game, I knew it. Where to find power cells? In the houses in the village of Hamlin. Or on the quest, where's the power? Where to find water pumps? Near the shelters in the garden district. And how to cure the plague? A phenocycline syringe, crafted with one empty syringe, one antiseptic, and two filtered waters in the early gameplay alpha. I thought I knew everything there was to know about We Have a Few as a game. Yet something felt unfulfilled. Just a niggling sensation that I couldn't shake, that I wasn't finding something complete. Then Die Dev Die came along, and I saw the game in a whole new light. I think Die Dev Die is a completionist. That is to say, a player who attempts to complete every challenge and earn every achievement or trophy. He is not one to play a game which he does not fully commit to. And this is shown through his style of playthrough. He takes his time to analyze every note, every scrap of information from the game, and ponders its value. Die Dev Die is dedicated to allowing his viewers to see and participate in the full experience. And he takes the time to go through each part of the game, so his viewers can do the same. Now this is really a matter of preference. Some people prefer people to speed through the game a fast pacing in their favorite Let's Players. But I really like his methodical approach in searching every corner for scraps. Granted, not every corner, because that would make for a boring experience, but most corners. And since then, I've been with him through, through We Happy Few, Watch Dogs 1 and 2, Infra, Event Zero, The Sexy Brutal, SCP Containment Breach, the Long Dark, and more recently, Cuphead. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Are you seeing a pattern here? Because I certainly am. Die Dev Die plays such an eclectic role range of games from all manners of genres. Now look at this scattergraph. It's pretty, right? Yeah, it has nothing to do with this. It was a joke. <laughs> now, about Dev being human. Die Dev Die is a friendly and warm person whom you can connect to easily. Amidst the gameplay, he shares tidbits of personal insight and makes a gen genuine effort to connect to his viewers. 
When he finished King Dice in his playthrough of Cuphead, you could feel a real sense of accomplishment as he celebrated. And as a viewer, so did I, as I shared the experience with him. I also want to take a second to talk about his dedication towards his viewers. Die Dev Die is extremely receptive to feedback and suggestions, taking gameplay requests to series. For instance, this can be seen in his final part of his Let's Play for Cuphead, in which he says, Those last two bosses, holy shit. To give you some perspective, I think I've played like four hours. But yeah, last four hours were the <laughs> last two bosses, and I even had to take a break after King Dice. Not only that, but he literally died and tried again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times in that one video. And that is equivalent to many hours of gameplay. And that's not counting any deaths off camera. In addition, the vast majority of it is edited out with only the highlights so as not to bore the viewer. If that doesn't speak volumes about his dedication, I don't know what does, because that is amazing. Now I want to go over some of the co content outlined in my previous video, because Die Dev Die nails reacting perfectly. In my previous video, I discussed how Let's Players need to react, and to do so, they react to things inside the game by narrating the game content, reacting to this content, and then making something new from it. But to be perfectly clear, he does this every video, which just shows how much of an amazing YouTuber he is. Okay, number one, narrating game content. Now at two, get that extra heart. Nope. I just like this boss. Yeah, I've already guessed. <laughs> or this section of the game. Oh, no. Full. So as you can see, Dev regularly narrates on-screen text, helping bring the game to life in an interesting manner. But when I say narrating, I also mean Dev tells his audience exactly what is happening on screen. For example, I am an idiot, come on, game, or Dev. <laughs> and he's stuck in the corner. This helps the audience understand what is happening and gives them insight to why Dev might be acting in a certain way. Number two, reacting. I'll play you a 20 second long segment. I should go drop off some stuff actually. Look how much I'm carrying, 153 pounds of, of junk. Yeah, let's go to the shelter first. We're gonna have to fast travel anyways. I wonder if the plague hey Katie, the same thing. how are you tonight? Now this is something you'll see a lot of as Die Dev Die keeps a steady stream of commentary, making his gameplay varied and entertaining for his viewers. He always reacts to what is happening, informing his audience of how he is feeling and the thoughts running through his mind. And I think this is what separates Let's Plays, because we watch every game through a lens. And, then, and in the case of gameplay videos through the lens of the Let's Player, in Dev's case it feels entertaining, humble and persevering. How do I know that? From his commentary. He is appreciated, appreciative and thankful, but he is also extremely entertaining. Now the third thing is creating a story within a story, and Dev does this excellently. And I know I talked about how YouTubers create a story by projecting their thoughts on inanimate objects to create a more interesting narrative, but the way that Dev does it is not through talking objects but through little pieces of his reactions to form an overall narrative. He takes on the role fully and does his best to make the experience as authentic as possible. But reacting is also about reacting to things outside the game so you can relate to your viewers. And it's everything from recognizing a person on the live stream to asking how your viewers are doing perhaps letting the viewers into small tidbits about yourself. And I think Die Dev Die does that. So that about concludes my talk about Die Dev Die. But I just want to reiterate that he is an amazing person. 
Now, the second YouTuber I wanted to discuss was Christopher Odd, as one of my favorite Let's Players. And yes, I am aware that I featured him in my, pre my previous video, so I won't talk too much about this amazing figure, because wow, he is amazing, and there is so much to talk about. But I wanted to talk a little about how Christopher Odd excels at storytelling, telling a story within the story. So many YouTubers have a token game which they play and record most, or are recognized most for, and is a key part of their identity. For the Rad Brad, I think this would be the Dead Rising series, as it helped start his channel. For PewDiePie, Amnesia, The Dark Ascent, because it kickstarted his channel as well. For Die Dev Die, I'd say it would be We Happy Few, as it is the game which Dev has recorded most. For Christopher Odd, it is the XCOM series, specifically XCOM 2. To give you an idea of how much a token game, a signature part of his identity, it is, Christopher Odd has 368 videos on XCOM 2. 368 as of 25th of December. Oh wait, today's Christmas. Happy Christmas. Anyway, even if we go with a conservative estimate of 30 minutes per XCOM 2 video, Christopher Odd has still made 184 hours of videos on XCOM 2, which is a lot. Again, outstanding dedication. Now, out of all his XCOM 2 play gameplays, I like Season 4 Legend the most. This one playthrough of XCOM 2 lingers on in my mind. What makes Season 4 Legend my favorite? Well, I could say that it was the stellar gameplay from Christopher Ott, his tactical and experienced approach to eradicating alien foes, which is true. When Christopher Ott plays, it's just intensely satisfying, the way he picks off foes and how he can make his way out of seemingly unconquerable odds. That is certainly part of the reason. However. What personally stood out for me is the stories that Christopher Odd makes with his soldiers. For starters, all his soldiers are named and have unique biographies, courtesy of his audience, who make and customize the soldiers for Christopher Odd. I want to say that this is just an outstanding way to involve your audience, so props to you. But specifically, the character I still distinctly remember is a soldier named Carmine. Not only because she's a beautiful character who looks badass, because that face mask is amazing and that hairstyle also stunning, I'll admit that much. Also her uniquely named weapon, song and dance, makes her that much more memorable. However, Christopher Odd also made her a pivotal focus. When Christopher Odd saw that Carmine was hitting a disproportionate amount of shots, he capitalized on that to make a vastly more compelling story. And I will admit, Carmine did have some pretty lucky shots because she had a crazy hit percentage and was pretty much the ace of the team. And this connects to the overall reason why this reason, why this season stood out for me personally. The host of unique characters. There was Carmine, the clutch shooter, Priya, the sarcastic rogue, Mike and Sari, the Blade Masters, Walker, the Sharpshooter, and Nora and Heidi, the Psy Operatives. And each of them had a unique story behind them. All of them were vibrant, organic characters who felt alive, felt the strain of their fallen cam comrades and the duty to save their country. Part of this is due to the beauty of XCOM 2. Because the characters are blank templates, Let's players are able to project whatever they want onto the game. And Christopher Odd executes this splendidly, explaining how he always manages to tell a unique story in each of the seasons or playthroughs of XCOM 2. This is because each of the seasons are the story of a new and unique squad. Christopher Odd creates individual personalities for each character, making them relatable. When it Whenever one of his soldiers dies, he is, generally, he is genuinely devastated. 
And I think this is why I like Christopher Odd's content so much. I am amazed at the unique and spellbinding stories he is able to conjure. And this brings me into the logs which his community writes for him at the end of each XCOM episode. These are small creative journals written from the perspective of soldiers of soldiers Christopher Odd commands and reflect the success or failure of a mission. I like them. They're creative and fun. So thank you, Bob Riders. And I think they're inspired by the stories which Christopher Odd creates. Now, don't get me wrong, I love his more recent playthroughs, such as his first XCOM 2 War of the Chosen playthrough. However, I think the tension of possible defeat is more palpable in his Season 4 Legend playthrough. In the downloadable content, War of the Chosen, the Reaper class just felt a little bit overpowered, as they gave entire squads squad side while remaining undetected, along with their destructive arsenal of explosives, such as claymores, homing mines, and remote start. Also banish. Wow, that ability is overpowered, especially with the superior repeater. Anyway, that's about it. And I want, just want to thank you very much for being here. I just want to thank, also thank, Christopher Odd and Die Dev Die for their amazing content and recognize you guys again for the fantastic work that you do. Please keep what you are doing. Keep, please keep doing what you are doing. We as the viewers love you for it. Whew. And that's it. I've got an episode. I've got another episode of. Uh, I've got another episode on a regular at Magic High School planned out, and I'm currently playing Doki Doki Liter Literature Club, and we'll see that where that takes me. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you had an enjoyable stay with this video, and thank you very much for being here and watching. Have an epic day. Anime Nyan, out.